Yeah, fear. Hmm, I don't know. Insects. Insects. Mm. Insects. Why? Yeah. Why insects? But I get I get bitten a lot, so oh, really? I must be I must be the most attractive person in <laughs> insects world. Insects world, you know. It's like it's I always get bitten on 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 so and sorry. Then, yeah, and, and, and antibiotics and that that sort of level. It's a uh, really you, yeah yeah. It's really yeah. I need it to. Be. I must be I must be like a George Clooney in in the insect world. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad I'm popular somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, um, you know, it's, but it's crazy. It's crazy. They, they, oh. they take risks. I, I mean, you know, I, I can help myself uh, being attracted to the insects. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> yeah. That's a talent. It, That's a talent. Yeah, it must be. It must be. I mean, it should be on my CV. So Dai, welcome to the Forte podcast. It's so great to have you here. And thank you very much for giving us your time. How are you? Fine, thank you for having me. Yeah, no, ab absolute pleasure, absolute pleasure. So I, I love to start off the episode mm -hmm. with the topic of consistency. So you mm -hmm. said before in the interview um, that you compose every day. And I wondered if yeah. you could talk about the subject of consistency in creative people. How, how important is it for creative people to, to be consistent in their productivity? I, I mean, I don't know in a, in a way that I compose every day, but it's not like I have to compose every day. It's just something I do, like since when I'm eight. But in a way, like uh, you, you breathe. I mean, you, you, don't, you don't think like I have to breathe every day, what you do. Uh, it's a bit like that it's just i just i was composed i don't know why i just did always did um it's so much fun um composing and um and then the more more i think especially the time since the pandemic because everybody's locked locked in and so on uh we all were uh, in uk um civilly i would say um, then I, I know a lot of my friends who had a psychological uh, uh, problems and issues, which is totally understandable because it's, we have never set, faced this before. Um, but at the same time, I mean, I don't know. If I always thought like, it, if you compose, you don't have. I mean, it doesn't. Comp you can anyone can compose music. I mean, you don't have to compose for orchestra or so whatever whatever you want to do. I mean, it's your freedom to to compose music. But if you are composing music, I bet it's healthier, even during lockdown, because you can do that in lockdown. And then, um, yeah, I, I'm sure it's it's uh, definitely mentally healthier if you compose music or anything creative. But composing music, it's it's it's, it's nice because um, it's because it's a relationship with uh, with the sound you make. For example, you compose. You think about the opening, whatever that is, and then you you think about the opening. But it could be that's not the opening of the piece. It could be that could be the middle. I don't. We don't know. But at the same time, I mean, as I get older, I would I always think that um, it's a relationship between the music you just created and me. So basically, I need to ask her. In my case, I don't know why, but her music. Uh, where she wants to go or where does she, where does she lead me to next or maybe she thinks that that's not the opening she she said it's the opening well i thought it's the opening i don't know but she said it isn't so i don't know we have to find out what it is but then it's it will be led by the music so that's the dialogue we go in my in my case so it is not like when when i was young of course i, I was more like controlling it's uh that's uh, what you do you know you know many pages of sketches before you start writing music and I'm the composer, I need to, I know what I'm doing. This is the structure, this is the concept, philosophy, and that's how it is. That's okay, I've done that. 
But again, now I think it's 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 different. The music would tell me where I should go. The music would tell me, "Go, hey, come on, it, it, this is too short." The music telling me, "Goes, oh, come on, give, give me some space here." And then, oh, okay. And then I go, "What about this?" Goes, "Okay, okay, that's better." Things like this. And then on top of that, as I said earlier in a before the interview, I hope you use that material that I I always work with the musicians whom I'm writing for, always. And then the musicians, um, I'm lucky that I work with a, a really fantastic musicians and they are fantastic musicians and they have a great career and they are there for a reason because they have, they can play the notes and play instruments, sure, but they have more to offer. And then with their um, even test smartphone recording of the fragments I just composed at their home, I mean, that is a great inspiration, even though, I mean, I mean, uh, even instrument like violin or clarinet, I mean, I know what a clarinet sounds like. I know what violin look, sounds like, sure. But at the same thing, when they just, just play it, even though they would say, oh, it's, I'm sorry, it's a sigh reading and a, and a smartphone recording. But then they, when, they, when they receive it, it's, I can see it, it has a power in a, each uh, be, behind the notes. And then I immediately think, well, that's, that's too short. The music now tells me now the music. You see, I told you it's too short. It goes okay, and then I need to make it bigger. So that's how uh, music grows uh, for me, anyway. And I always mm. think that when the, the I always think that the music tells me when the end of the piece is. She will say, "Okay, this is the end now." Oh, okay. I mean, I thought it might be, but I don't know. But sometimes, like, well, this isn't, you can't end here. But can't I? Because it's, I mean, it's, it's a, you know, because of professional world, I'm now going back, going to some boring subjects. Like, for example, um, because, I mean, I, w my family only live from my composing. Uh, well, they sleep, but we do. And uh, so there's a contract, a uh, commission contract that says that how long the piece is. So usually those are like a vague like 15 minutes or 20 or it's not like a 17 minutes 30 seconds or something like this it's some somewhere around there so when you reach there the minimum length let's say i mean i could finish there contractually let's say but again the music said well no you, we, no, you can't you can't let me hang here and just, i'm in the middle so oh, okay so i need to write more and then there's a time uh the music say you're done now <laughs> that's okay that's that's the that's the piece I mean, that's the kind of uh, relationship I have. Yeah. So when did this relationship, so this relationship wasn't mm. there when you were younger as a composer, no. this happened when no. you, as you got older. Mm, yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, and uh, because when, when you are young, composer, I mean, I don't know if you have, uh, I mean, it, as a musician, if you, uh, if you have to work with young composers, I, I hope that you will be nice to them and stuff because a young being young composer is very difficult. Well, I mean, definitely for me, it was very difficult. And then I think everybody's difficult. It is difficult because I mean, it's a lot you, you because because you write music, but it's not like a painting you paint and you can see you write. And then if somebody needs to somehow somebody in whatever the level they need to say, you are the guy, you're the guy, you're the composer, we will play your music somewhere along the line i'm going to practice i'm going to play your music okay one person is, is fine but it could be two or three people they they need to agree we will have a rehearsal we will play even in uh, someone's living room right so so to do that i we need to convince somebody so at least if it's three then three people that's a, that's a living room concert situation that is because if it's the concert you know very well that organizer they are um, I don't know the cost of that. I don't know who pays, whatever. But the, the more people needs to be convinced. So they need to be convinced to tell, to convince the others to get the music to be heard. So for example, you write a note, I always say, um, oh, okay, uh, if that is going to be performed more than one person by yourself, more than by you, then the pitch, every pitch, every note has to have, uh, has to convince that some people. Yeah, so well, when you're younger, it's it's hard because I mean you're no one, so absolutely nobody. So you write score, and that needs to be convincing. I mean, you know, I can guarantee it's gonna sound great. Just 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 go with mine. <laughs> but again, they won't. They have no. We agreed to play the other person's comp composition, which is fair enough. But it, but I need to get there. 
how do we do that? That's that's very hard. And um, and uh, yeah, so I I think when I was younger, it's it's more. I felt like I, I'm sure not, I'm not the only one who needs to prove that you are something. You're writing something, um, and so on, so on, so on. And then uh, then I started to yeah uh, work with like really world class musicians, and uh, you 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 immediately see if you are sensitive enough. I don't mean sensitive as in like uh, uh, I get offended or things like. That. I don't mean like a sensitivity to the sound. And the situation and energy you feel from the others, uh, because definitely not, because we're not. This is not science, which is uh, which is art. And uh, if you feel that, you immediately see, immediately see, for example, like a violinist, right? There's a there's a violinist. It's every violinist is well. I mean, it's a different type. Let's say the violinists who are in the orchestra, which is also, I mean, it's a special skill, and in you know, it's not everyone can do. So violinists, and then there are violinists who plays in front of those group of violinists, violinists right on the orchestra, and then there's some violinists who can just stand there in a the hall with a violin, her violin, his violin, and they can, I mean, you can do a concert in front of two thousand people, and that's okay, and everybody buy tickets to see that, and immediately you see, wow, that's that's why, if you meet such person. And then from my job is as a composer is that uh, how can I how can I get the most out of such a, a talent obviously of that musician and how can I get the most out of it rather than like a, a disturb such um, special skill let's say well it's, it's like a it's like a Marvel movies isn't it like a, a superhero basically superhero with a special what do you call it the ability let's say. You know, that, so I mean, I, I should enhance that rather than like stop them doing it because that's mm -hmm. why that person uh, decided to do whatever the tool just by herself, or but just his himself, and then it's packed. <laughs> you know, yeah. And then even though if I'm if I were lucky enough to have one piece played by that such person, she or he plays, then that was a questionable. Then then back to Brahms or, or a Bach and then a bit oh now we back to superhero time I think that's sad if that's the case so I want to make sure that the mind can also that that's my aim anyway mm. um so 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 that's that's why I, I think the the working closely with a musician is a, a absolutely important for me yes yes absolutely mm. well wow, that's everything you said was really really insightful um especially in the contrast with visual artists, you know, they create and their final product can be seen all together. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's in your the, room, in your, in your in room. Your yeah, exactly. You can pull it out on the street, people will see it. Mm -hmm. But with um, composers, just composing the manuscript is the first hurdle. That's it. There's I mean, more well, that's not music. That's not yeah. music. It's a yeah, paper. Exactly. <laughs> it's a piece of paper. You need people to, to play it to actually have it realized. And I just want to ask you this question. Do you remember um, when your first ever composition was played by someone? That's a good question. And, and before I answer that, that I was going to say, I know it's a bit um, horrible to say, but I always think that I, so there's a paper, piece of paper, right? And I write a note. I mean, that paper has less value than the paper because I, I put the dirt on it. It's my scribbling on it. It's less value unless it gets played. Then there's a value of the music thanks to the musician mm. so therefore when i write the note i value the value of the paper decrease because it's, it's, you can't you can't sell it anymore because it's that somebody drew on it right <laughs> unless somebody plays oh that's a good that's that's something because it, it sounds wonderful because of the musician but you know so so that's i i think so if i'm writing music on any notes that it has to be played whatever whatever the way it doesn't have to be greatest concert hall or something. Well, now in pandemic time, it's lovely on the YouTube. It's fine, but it has to be played. So mm. that's I I think of a paper. Okay, well, it doesn't matter. I mean, this is just a metaphor. I mean, one can say I I only write music in computer. Fine, but I'm just saying it's a less value. Just if you put just just you put a dot on it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's my 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 way of thinking. Okay, so my first time. I, People was composed. Uh, was played. Um, it, it was um, it was uh in uh yeah, 
it was in Dover College because I went to Dover College, which is the high school. And I was, uh, because when I was 15, I moved to England from Japan and on my own. So, uh, so yeah, I went to high school in Dover College and, um, they had a music department and I was a music scholar. So it was, it was okay. It was nice. Uh, there was a talented, uh, students. Um, then, uh, I was just like now I was writing for them. And, uh, yeah, in fact, it, it, it's funny the since then, then the music college, uh, I went in London until now it's, it's the same as in, I always with the musician. I write, I ask them to play, or how to play, and then, well, okay, that doesn't sound so good. Is it me or the musician? But, but it's a good thing is that, um, because music college, as well as the high school, definitely, I mean, there, I mean, I don't know. I mean, of course, some musicians were very talented and everything, but some musicians that they just couldn't play because, because they're students, right? So, so that's, that was quite interesting, uh, study for me. I can say, oh, wow, that's, that's easy on the piano, but that's really awkward, but that sounds bad. So let me just change that. And I will sometimes ask, well, why, what, what, what's going on here? What, what is the awkward place? And then the musician will tell me because I have to do that. And so to now, oh, okay. So what about this? Oh, that's better. Even that, that sort of way of working. And so it's, yeah, I would say in, when I was in high school, um, yeah, I was in high school. Since in, yeah, when I was in high school, I worked with uh, musicians uh, who were in high, high school with the instruments, and then um, yeah, it was a that was the that was the beginning of the joy of working with musician, uh, especially the instruments which I don't play. That was uh, nice. So it's about enhancing the the musicians' capabilities rather than. Yeah, yeah, but that's, that's comes later. That comes yes. later. You, I think you need to be a little older to, well, in my case, that is, I mean, when I was young, why can't you play? Oh, you, I wish, if I had a great musician, all that mm. stuff, of course, because you're a composer and, uh, you know, it sounds bad just because of the, my musician is bad. I mean, that, that kind of stuff, which is not true. I mean, <laughs> because when you're younger, you don't know, of course, I, I didn't know. So, but then again, um, I don't know, but it's, as I said, I think that, I mean, there are many composers, I think, that I speak to other composers and uh, some composers, um, yeah, as I said earlier, that they would, they told me that they would go to a special place to compose music in their head because it's composing special. That's true. But from my point of view, composing is such an everyday life uh, thing. So yeah um when i'm working with the musicians and so on that's also kind of normal uh situation hmm. to just ask and play and, and change oh that's better that kind of thing but there's a moment even today it, with a uh, working with a really great musicians even over the skype or that kind of online we're just walking out what's it's just it's just doesn't it's okay it's okay it works it'd be fine but but some, this is really bothers me, that kind of stuff. I just openly talk to the musician. I mean, of course, the musicians are very nice and polite. They were not going to say, oh, me too. I think it's, this sounds bad too. And they wouldn't say that, but I can sense it, you know, but then also it's, it's good. And then we try, we try, and try, you know, just give me a minute. And then they're just waiting and I just try to, oh, what about this now? And then I show sometimes to the screen like this. And then you try and immediately there's a moment that both of us say, that's it. This is it. And that's the great moment. Uh, we, we share and, and uh, I don't know, I, I think that's maybe it's benefiting the fact that the, 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 the way I work this way with a musician like that, that's probably why I have quite a, quite often, um, like a repeated, like a repeated customer, repeated musician who asked me to write again. Some, sometimes quite freaking out. I was going to say, well, didn't we just do that? Oh, yeah, but it's ended. Can we just do it again? It's like, okay, <laughs> another piece. You know, things like this. It's, very, it's just very nice. And, uh, mm. because, but at the same time, it's like a, yeah, I don't know. It's a very creative. It's a very much of, um, I remember similar thing, like me going to um, friend's house. I'm sure you did too. And everybody did too. Uh, friend's house. And then uh, there's a, 
big box of Legos when we just play. But these days, Legos are like a specific, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, build a Lego of a spaceship or something like this. But that's just, just that, that's like a, against the spirit of Lego, surely. Because in my time, it was like just Legos. <laughs> it's like you do whatever you want with it. So yeah, and that kind of stuff. So so it's it's a create to, creating together. And it's it's nice. But obviously, the um the height of such creativity and collaboration is opera. That's that's for sure. Because because there's not just music. There's a singer. There's a story librettist and and the stage director, lighting, all sort of things happening. And it's it's tough because of that. <laughs> all sort of department and all sort of politics behind this. But in in that, it's just uh, it's brilliant because because I mean, uh, stage director as well as all of these people in those positions. I mean, they are there for a reason because they didn't just come there. They also had to prove a lot of people to do a lot of production to finally get there as we all are. So to learn from them and respect them. And then from my point of view, just uh, because I'm a composer. So in a composing opera, quite often people would listen to my opinion, which is nice. But so therefore I shouldn't really give because they, they shouldn't really listen to me when it comes to something which is away from music, in my opinion, because because I mean, they are the they are the talent when it comes to staging, design, and stuff. So I should it's because they they're polite and they sometimes ask me. <laughs> but it's the best, in my opinion, not to say. Right. And then then you see, just don't don't interrupt their amazing talent. And then when blossoms, it's 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 incredible. Mm. And uh, that that's a great team effort. And then um, I don't know, I I mean, I don't know, I have. Three operas and several productions of each, and then I always had a great time and learning from different different talents. It's just a it's not an amazing thing that to to observe and learn from these people who yeah. have these talents and ability which you don't have. Clearly, you don't have. It's like a wow. It's amazing. <laughs> I mean, it's like a, did you just born with it, or is it one day you think, oh, I'm actually very talented? Or what is it? I don't know, but I, I don't know. I would like to ask them, but it's a, it's a very wonderful thing to to observe and the form of my own um, research. Uh, mm. uh, yeah, study is nice. Yeah, I think. yeah. Mm. Well, going back to your point of um, well, like you said before, repeat customers, repeat musicians coming back to you to compose. I can understand why, because if you don't mind the analogy, it's a bit like having a suit made for you just for you yeah, oh yeah exactly exactly it's great mm -hmm. it feels great that there's mm -hmm. so much effort and time being put into crafting someone something that's just mm. for you personally physically and musically yeah and, and uh, exactly that's the exact analogy i, I sometimes use is too uh, i use too that, that's the thing that but then i had to get older to get to that thinking for me that um it's not that because when I was younger, it's like, oh, your instrument, I mean, what are the bottom notes? What is the highest note? Mm. Is it possible to play? Can you, how fast can you play? Blah, blah, blah. That's sort of physical thing. I can play that. Only looking at this, can you play like this? That, I can play that sort of thing. But then I start realizing that uh, first, even talented musicians, they are human too, of course. <laughs> But also, and then also those people, even though they're talented and experienced, but they have to play this in front of people. Yeah. I mean, who knows what's happening in their life? I don't know. Um, this life is happening, even to this big stars, I guess. Um, and then I realized, what can I, what can I do to help them in a way? What can I do to help them for them to play or sing, sing, def definitely sing or play? Um, not the note I just wrote, can you play, but no, but saying the best sound of, from you. I mean, because a musician has this, oh, well, this, I, I, you know, musician, it's so nice when musicians say, well, with this, with this piece, I just, it's so in me. It's, 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 like, it's like mine. I can just do it. Uh, that, that's kind of when I'm collaborating, even heavy, uh, heavier than, I mean, closer then we, when we get to that situation that's nice when musicians tell me that because i mean sometimes the thanks to the other composers who are not that collaborative i have to say they really my opinion in my experience that the musicians really uh thanks me 
they, they thank me because all the other composers, they, they just arrived the piece and that's it. And then, and then I practiced, I, I, some of them I couldn't play. It's an unplayable, whatever. I played and then uh, the composer person didn't say anything or that sort of thing. But with me, it's like you will know from bar one till the end, all the big measures, uh, bars, which was cut. I mean, I cut. Now, sometimes the musicians ask me, oh, can, oh yeah, it's, it, it's, why did you cut that? I was well, I don't know, it's a bit much, isn't it? And I said, well, I mean, I mean, why? Why didn't you like it? Because uh, I don't know. Let, let me practice, and then let me practice. Well, what about that? Well, oh, that sounds good. Can can you can you put it back in? So I put it back in. You know, <laughs> they, that sort of thing is quite nice. And uh, but but uh, it's funny that I'm the, I must be the only composer who overcut things. I I just cut my own music a lot, and then sometimes musicians say, "Well, wow, that was my favorite," and then I knew I could do it better because because in fairness to the, the musicians, they are sight reading while we are testing, obviously. Um, you, you know how it is. You, you can play better in four months' time, but uh, you know. So that kind of very nice um, experience, and 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 then I always think that, uh, as I said in another interview too, um, if the musician who plays my music, if they look good, somehow I look good too. Yeah, I was just I about think. to say that. Yeah, I was just about. To... <laughs> but don't you think so? It's uh, it's. Uh, I, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it's it's very rare to to hear. Oh, I never heard. Like, I, it was an amazing performance. Obviously. As rather to the musician, for sure. I, I, I'm the first one to do that. And, and I don't know, it's a bit very rare. I would say, oh, but it's a terrible piece. I mean, it's not, it's not really, it's like a whole thing. <laughs> Great. But I'm sure there are, there are such things as a beautifully played, a wonderful musician. Why do they play such a horrible music? I get that, but I understand that that could happen. But I don't know, in my experience, that uh, when the musicians feel so great they, they they perform in front of people because they love to perform in front of people that's why they're performer yeah and they it, that'd be so nice they think oh this is really my thing or, mm, yeah um, and then it's and then it's it's nice they, they do it and then uh and then of course they, they the the audience because the audience is important because you i write music to be played and they play music to be heard so they are linked there uh, and, and that's what the what makes it music, isn't it? That's different from the as I said, the visual art. You you make, you see, and that's the end of it. I mean, it, I'm sure it's not true, but then but again, it is. For music, it's so much more complicated. It's uh, because to hear a sound you wrote, it's uh, well, where do we begin? Right? <laughs> How many meetings do we have to have? <laughs> and fundraisers and all sorts of things with even the little concerts it's hard and then even smaller venue it's hard to get the people come in so whatever you have a you know 2000 seat concert hall has a has a 2000 seat problems and 200 seat concert hall is 200 seat problems <laughs> to fill in so it's hard in any way i mean so um so we have to do it together and um yeah i don't know it's uh so that's the I don't know. I really enjoy creative process, but sometimes the some musicians. Oh, well, that's one thing I have to say. Some musicians either they don't want to collaborate, which is that's a bit sad. And uh, like, uh, well, just send me when you finish the piece. I mean, all right, that's a bit okay. I have a I have a solution to this as well. This because I because I am have I have experience. So that solution as well. To and another is the. Um, yeah, other is that uh, before COVID time, there's a it's two busy stars. They just don't have time. So that's why since the COVID, since the pandemic, that uh, I have we I some of the project I have I wrote them. Some of them are sort of finished. It was premiered, but I wasn't happy. I know that the mission wasn't happy. So I wrote to some of the mission say, look. I know you're not doing anything because everything is cancelled in the world. <laughs> this is the time. This is the time we must collaborate. And then the musician, some of the musicians say that oh, you're right. Can we just can we just do now? Because what are you doing? Well, nothing. And nobody's doing anything. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, that you know, freely, right? So we just met over the internet every single day for like five hours each, and we just collaborated them. And then we made the final version, which we're all happy and that kind of thing. That's. Uh, that's kind of nice, and um, yeah. So because we need time, it's, it's, it's you can't just uh, do uh, 
uh, instant cup noodle like uh, yeah. collaboration, like a hot water, three minutes done. I mean, it's not like that. So, so yeah, that, that's um, so the, the so the to just to say the first uh, experience of the former, uh, what I said, um, c- collaboration, but then the, the musician somehow I realized that the person doesn't want to collaborate. I find it a bit sad. Well, because sometimes, that, well, sometimes, quite a lot of times, I don't actually go there to say, can I please write for you? It's like, they, musicians ask me, I would love to you to write a piece. Well, sure, I'm glad, and then, um, gladly. And then I research for that person. That's fantastic. Let's do it. And I'm like, uh, jolly, let's collaborate. But I can see it's like a, like a dead there over there. It's like, <laughs> what is this difference? Then it's clear that person doesn't want to have this communication. Well, I, that's just weird. It's like it's a kind of mixed feeling here because of signal, mixed signal because that person offered to me. So then I sometimes so I when I don't hear from the, such musicians um, more than two weeks, I have another method. I contact my friend who plays the same instrument. And then I explain to them, look, mm. contra- contra- con- contractually, I cannot let you do our premiere in this. So I don't know why you want to help me, but would you like to help me? And I'm, <laughs> they're my friends. Well, of course. I mean, so if that person finish, do the world premiere, whatever that is, I can play after. Sure. So that person is already booked for the concert like, a, a, like next week, a week after the world premiere. Mm. The person does it, whatever. It doesn't matter. Just, and then that whoever I develop the piece with, uh, that person will take the piece over as if it's hers or his or mm. something like this. And then um, yeah, it's it, it's fine. And then uh, it's kind of weird thing that everybody thinks, oh, that everybody associates that piece with that musician. And they open the scope. Oh, I, I didn't know somebody else did that while playing. Well, yeah, apparently, <laughs> kind of. Yeah, that's kind of, but that, that's that's a bit sad in my opinion because I mean. I don't know why. Why would anyone do that? Maybe it yeah. was um, uh, it was a condition the musician got. Like I want to do a recital, and then uh, some concert hall organizer said, "Oh, you we, you need a new piece. Why don't you ask someone like him?" Um, okay, or something. I, this is my imagination hmm. because it's a mixed <laughs> signal. But uh, it rarely happens. But uh, yeah, I do like that. It's 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 fun. But, but, you know because it's uh, yeah. Yeah, I think that that's that's. That's really good because it's making good use of your networks and your connections and your friends. Yeah, and your friends. I mean, the good resources. friends. They're very nice. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Well, I I read <coughs> one of your interviews with fifteen questions. You did an interview of fifteen questions, and you said, oh, okay. which I found really really intriguing, was mm. the concept of utopia. You said that oh, yeah. you, you want to write mm. music to um, create this utopia that you want you want to live in. Mm and i want to really explore this what does dai's utopia look like or feel like it's you know it's a yeah it's a i think i think that um first of all i i think that in my opinion the music the sound which is the richest i don't know scientifically i don't care about that i'm, I'm just in my opinion my experience yeah sure that sound is the richest um senses which triggers us the sound triggers you to f- feel of course okay but not like that not just that but it feels to taste yeah Sounds can taste and smell and, and touch and and and, and eat. <laughs> All that stuff can be done with a single sound, in my opinion. And then that combination of it and the tempo and and the musicians' uh, energy to perform it and the group of energy, group of musicians' energy and the conductor and the solos and the chemistry happening presented and then in my opinion you can well i i think that music is some kind of making the world but here i don't mean the world in that sort of christians christianity sense that god is a composer i don't mean i'm not interested in any of that and a lot of people would mistaken to be that i don't i'm not saying that at all but i just think that 
It's like a, I don't know, like a mushrooms, you know, it's a, it's a sound, uh, it's, it's a signals which, which um, inspires and influences all sorts of the other nerves and, and, uh, and which will make us create many different dimensions that can create to get becomes the world. And uh, yeah, I would like to just create the world. Yeah, create the world I want to live in. And that's, that's so true to me even now. Um, maybe it's because I never, we never get to live in a place we actually want to live. <laughs> Well, we do. I mean, I don't say horrible thing. I mean, we have a very nice landlord, landlady, and everything. But, <laughs> but you know, how it is London. It's expensive. You know, it's it's it's, uh, it's hard, and uh, we just have to make the best out of it, and that kind of thing. And it's too small, and all that stuff. But in, in music, that's what I meant in the beginning. I said earlier that in pandemic, if you can compose, if you compose music, if, even in lockdown, I'm sure that mentally it will be healthier. Um, because you, 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 it's, it's, you're not here, you are somewhere, you are in your music world, which you created, and you can just live there. And diary, and I'm hoping during the time of duration of the, of the piece. And then for me is I created this, I cr want to create this space where I want to go. And I would like to invite people just for the duration of the piece. And then, well, you can just look around and then maybe it's nice or you just think, okay, that was nice. And then you, you go after the piece. It's fine. <laughs> so it feels like that. I mean, it's like, a, yeah, it's like a utopia. It's like um, colors are more vivid and, you know, it's like a f middle of super nature, not just a nature, but like a, an Im imaginative nature, which doesn't give you allergy or any of the annoyances are not there. It's everything is beautiful. It's a flowing and, and you you can eat something in there. You eat them, bite them, and maybe crisps, crispy outside, maybe very juicy inside. After taste is different from the beginning of the taste, which is very important. That is so difficult to teach people who doesn't have a relationship to the food, but there are such people. I don't know what to do with them. What? <laughs> But I mean, some of my students, well, a lot of my students, I, I teach a little bit and then most of the students, uh, luckily for me, they all come from very rich food cuisine, all sorts of culture. They immediately understand all these things. It doesn't matter wh wh which country, but it's very important uh, for them, which, like, as I understand, I understand too. So, so we can talk about this orchestrations and sound because it's, it's not a, a sound, it's not the static thing because it, it moves, isn't it? Sort of. And um, yeah, so that's its energy also moves and flows, and then the, how does it flow? That's very interesting for me. And so yeah, so those are combination of this. It could keep moving, and then I also hope hoping that the, the person. It's a weird thing to think about. Um, how does other people listen? Because I never, I've never been to other people's ear. So how do they hear? I don't know. Don't you think so sometimes? Even the color too, isn't it? I, I call this blue, let's say. I see this blue, but maybe you are looking at yellow for me, but you are told that is blue. I mean, we, we don't know. Yeah. Three, so because we, 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 it's, we don't know. It sounds, same with the sound. I don't know. To me, that sound like this, I, I hear like that and sounds sounds great to me. And then, but you might think that, that it sounds, it could be sound great to you, but also I hear completely different. I'm sure it's different. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, I we're we're influenced also by the environments we grew up in and how we see things are different absolutely. due to our absolutely. upbringings. Yeah, so absolutely. I think that's that's one of the beauties of interpretation is so much yeah. variety. And at that time too, I mean, it, at that time too, meaning the, the of performance. So, for example, like even I, I'm a recording nerd, so I. I I love recordings and I, I make my own recordings and, and I release them. I don't know who listens to them, but I do. And I mix them and, and master them. It's all that stuff, but I love doing this. Um, it, and I can tell you, even the recording of the same music played twice, matinee concert and evening concert, it's different. Even in silence from the audience, I hear difference. <laughs> it's very different, really. It's a martini is it's I can sense it's a happier, freer, but they're not less tight. 
on the evening it's 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 a yes. special power but don't you yes. think that sometimes i always think that you know don't you think the evening has mm-hmm. special power because don't you I just, yeah i was just about yeah. to say um it's something i thought about a lot you know for example two friends mm-hmm. are talking having a conversation mm-hmm. if the two friends are having a conversation in the afternoon sun's out everyone's out and compare that with the same conversation same two friends but in the evening it's different even the evening conversation even though you talk about the same thing it just feels a lot deeper it feels a lot more yeah, intimate absolutely. yeah but don't, but don't you feel that even didn't you do this when you were a schoolboy um i don't know uh school trip whatever right, right? And it's it's in the evening you talk about who you fancy or whatever, whatever all that yeah, stuff. Yeah. People yeah, do that, yeah. but it's in the evening. You don't do that like like after after lunch, right? <laughs> Sorry, it's me. You know what I mean? It's like you you don't you don't do that in a in a in a day day daylight, but you do yeah. it in a in the evening, and, and everybody's whispering and you know it maybe underdo it. I don't know, but but but, but then that has to be something to do with 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 the evening. Mm. night power of the of the evening and uh, yeah. i'm same. sure it's the same uh, yeah, with, exactly. with performance think, yeah, exactly yeah i think so too i think there's a translation there yeah absolutely um are, are there any other pieces not composed by you but composed by other people any any piece you like could be a song um that gives you a, a similar sense of utopia maybe not utopia but a sense of comfort like it's like it's like the pieces it, the piece understands you and how you feel and yeah, i see well there is there, there's so many so many music and then so much music and a different genre of music so mm. I, I can't really pinpoint what and then and then i can't really say one and then not mention the other so it's uh, <laughs> so I, I i don't know but uh for me there's a several well i don't know about utopia i'm not talking about utopia but the, yes. this this sound to me i always thought and then funny enough i don't listen to this music often enough i think of uh ligeti's clocks and clouds hmm. yeah that piece he starts right and then it's, it's a beautiful piece um patterns and so on and then halfway through the, there's a big chords coming in and then there's another chords coming it's it just it's for to me that sounds like it opens the world mm. the widest possible like uh like a, with a with a range you know like a red range i don't know why this possible then the next code is wider in my mind and wide it's it's like where how is that possible how is it where is it going yeah in, in a greater sense it's that is amazing to me uh, even though i funny enough i only listened to that piece live twice or three times and and then i i know i love the music and um i don't I have recordings, of course, but I don't listen to it enough. But yes, that's a sensation. And also another sensation I have is that Daphne and Chloe, um, there's a beautiful cello melodies. Hmm. And uh, there's a moment the cello line goes to the two notes, split into two notes. It's nothing really. One single note, it goes two notes, right? That, two, that, that opening of two notes, to me, for me, that is a very sensual. I find it very sensual. I don't know why. It, just is yes that's and also at the same time i have to say and again i don't listen to enough but music kind of later music by Boulez, i often thought that music was like as if written for my taste <laughs> <laughs> because of this this attack and an aggressiveness and then it's um yeah i don't know why the Boulez. i didn't, never understood Boulez told me that once he likes to he he said that i I used to like drive to to drive a car in the evening. Ah, oh, that's because of the opposite lane. There's a car coming with the lights coming towards you. And then somebody interrupted. I just don't understand but, but why that is fascinating. But sorry, that's like dangerous. I, I don't drive, so I don't know. But but anyway, but then he had this because I worked with him, I said conducted my pieces too. He has got this, even when he was over 80, he has got this like a little boy, like on a bike, little boy on a, like a motorbike, kind of a speed, uh, fanatic danger, you know, smells of like a danger, like a, you're with, like a, with him, it's like a, you're with, uh, 
bad boy, bad, bad kid in school that kind of <laughs> feels, you know, um, that feels uh, in, in his performance. It's uh, so his music, uh, I remember, yeah, like Sur and Seas and Repon, even those on, and the experts and fix, all those, the, the attack and, and the song, it's just so like a, you, you know, um, what do you call it? Uh, we we say shiatsu, but what what is this 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 massage point? Um, you know, there's there's a point. It, it's, I'm sure it's, I'm sure that's uh, no Japanese. It's Chinese the acupuncture point. Yeah, that's right. You know, right. acupuncture points like this, and you know that you hit and you you feel oh that's there. That yes. I feel like his attack and things were fitting in my acupuncture uh, points. I felt uh, that's what I wanted to say and. Um, yeah, and then, and then yet, if you cut everywhere in his music, it, the harmony is just so beautiful. It's just beautiful every. It's, it's in a way, it's a bit like a like a little candy. I'm sure he will. He will. <laughs> I hope he will <laughs> forgive me. Uh, it's like a little candy, uh, traditional candy in Japanese. You cut everywhere; it has a picture in it. I feel a bit like that with his music. It's anywhere because if you're sitting in his rehearsal of his music, it's fascinating because you 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 don't play it's rehearsal. You don't play from bar one, obviously. Let's play from bar 256. It sounds sounds amazing from there too. <laughs> from that moment. Oh, that's not, so in my opinion that his music is for me, it's like a, every harmony is a resolution. So no suspension, just resolution, resolution, resolution. In my opinion, it's very strange music. Is it, is it long? Is it short? Is it fast? It's slow. We don't know. I mean, well, what is that? I find that fascinating. And then, and then, yes, a pop song, pop music, and so on. Yeah, it's, it's endless. I could, I could go on. But so, yeah. Um, yeah. It's, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm so glad you mentioned Boulez because, you know, he performed your um, orchestral piece. Was it Stream, Stream State? Stream State, yes. And he's a supporter of your work. And I was wondering if you could just tell us and the audience your relationship with Boulez. How did it start? What were your first impressions of him? Yeah, well, I mean, uh, he was uh, he was my, my hero um, when I was studying composition. Um, many people are, I'm sure. And um, yeah, he, co he conducted a lot of pieces, uh, important works, modern pieces. So there, uh, therefore, you can go and listen to his recordings and his concerts when he was active. Uh, alive and active, and then I went to see him. Uh, his what well, he conducted, uh, not necessarily his own music, but but uh, that's what a lot of composers did back then. And then uh, I think two thousand three, it was uh, sort of like a call for pieces, but then it was internal. So it was um, so I was lucky. I at that moment I met Peter Ötvich. Peter Ötvich is a, is a very important person for me. Um, I mean, I even say even more important to me than Boulez because, uh, um, yeah, Peter Etrich, who I mean, I was a big fan of, and then uh, somehow London Sinfonetta at the time they were doing this project, and then they wanted, they asked me to take part in a show called Blue Touch Paper, and then they asked we can we're thinking to to have a mentor for for the each composers me for me too. I said, oh, okay, great. Well, well, who, who, do, whom do you want? I mean, we can ask for you, and that's all. Well, I, so I wanted somebody who I can never meet, right? <laughs> because I was a student, a rock college is a music student, and I said, "Well, what about Peter Ötvis? And they just like, "Yeah, okay, we'll, we'll ask ask him for you," but I probably will know. I mean, right? <laughs> like, why? Why would he say yes? I mean, he doesn't know me. Of course, he doesn't. Right. But anyway, find so 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 weird that the so they asked him for me when he said yes so wow he oh by the way he said yes oh okay oh by the way your next lesson so that my our first lesson is 10 months time from now so of course of course big star and then i, I have 25 minutes it's precisely 25 minutes and um and okay uh, 25 minutes uh, so it's 10 months it's a long time but it's okay i i, I can wait but immediately uh, two days later i just got a very short email from pet Ertwish. Two emails say, um, oh, sorry, it's the email I was cut. Um, yeah, two, two emails um, from Peter Ertovich saying that, um, yeah, basically, I I don't know your music. Well, I'm sure. I don't know your music. Can you send some? That's it. 
So I this time was not it was around 2002, 2003. So there are no, I mean, no one really sent like MP3 or PDF score via email. So I, so please post your music to this address. So you know, actually went to post office and send it. So I had some music uh, scores and and, and um, recordings on the CDR, and so and then and send it to him. And um, yeah, and then I didn't hear anything from him for well until te- until I meet him. So, but then that's normal. Why 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 would I hear from him, right? But but from that moment onwards, I'm getting all sorts of weird emails from. A lot of places like Ansem Modern, Academy de Constant Berlin, Lucerne Festival, and and uh, I think it was a clan forum being to all those sorts of places. Basically, they said exactly the same thing. I don't know you, but Peter Utrecht said we should know you. So can you <laughs> send some music? Well, basically they were like, who are you? Basically, so wow, because, because you know you you can't. I don't know these days. Maybe people go into um, the Facebook or something to get in touch with these people. I don't know. But at that time, it was a, not such communication, and there's no social network, social network. So if you don't know anybody, how do you get there? But anyway, does he open the door for me? And so I just I just did exactly what they asked me to do. So please send us a score because we don't know you. So okay, I just score send. So now everywhere I sent, it became some kind of project um with me that's great and then uh one of the month lucerne festival and they were looking for young composer two young composers for they'll be chosen by bullets and bullets the chosen composers will be um workshopped by bullets a year before the world premiere and based on that workshop you can write orchestra music they will commission premiered by bullets and i mean why not why not enter so <laughs> so i entered and then uh yeah i was the i was shortlisted i remember i was shortlisted and um so 2003 so 2005 was the world premiere so 2003 two years before so they were asked me we will support you i mean pay you to come to visit lucerne and then can you because mr Belez wants to meet composers final final compo- uh, fi- finalist composers and then he will decide so, so okay I'm, I, I, it's okay for me not to be chosen i mean if i if i get to see him i mean like meet face to face that's great right that's great so that's that's great um, it's fine i mean whatever that comes so i went to lucerne in 2003 yeah i remember the there's a meeting point in this lucerne festival office which is in the middle of town it's a very t- small town lucerne and then I was like 45 minutes early. I don't know what to do. I was just walking, walking, walking around and all this time. And I just, I just couldn't walk anymore because it's just, I don't know. It's, it's this is Swiss people say it's punctual. So it's okay to be maybe a little early. I don't know. Is it okay to be like 20 minutes early, but let's go in anyway. It's a bit rude, you know, 20 minutes early. So I went in there. So they were all told you're early. So I remember, I never forget that. So I walked in to their office, I walked in and I see, I see that a room with a door a little bit open. And I can see him, Boulez, looking over my score. I can say, wow, that's, that's Boulez. I've never seen that distance. Because he's always on the on a stage and I don't go back there and like a fans or something. I don't do that. So you know what I mean? The distance is far. And then I'm, I was a student even now, but I can only afford cheapest tickets. So I'm like a back <laughs> on the Barbican, right? I'm like a really like, like this, you know, <laughs> bullets. That's my bullets distance. So you got really oh, close. Yeah, yeah, small bullets. Now now it's like a like a 3D and everything. Well, it's 3D in a Barbican too, but so then um, yeah, so I walk past. I, I don't want to say anything. I just just looking like really into my score, like a really in details, as if like there's a he's making a hole with his eyes, I don't know. So I was walking. And then so obviously he must have heard my footstep. So he turned, turned. So in the slit of the door, he sees me, and he he just he he just says, "Not yet, <laughs> not yet. you know like the way he he stops the orchestra, not yet." So it's okay. No, I, I know it's I'm twenty twenty minutes early. So I just wait there. So I was just waiting, and then there's some office people are trying to make it easy, I guess. 
tell you that kind of things, but I don't remember the conversation. I wasn't listening. <laughs> of course, I was too nervous. <laughs> too nervous. Yeah. <laughs> so, so whatever. Yeah, yeah, fine. So then the, the time come, ha, has come, which is completely on the dot. He just comes out. out now I'm ready. He said, and I said, you come in. And then I, I went on my own. So two of us, we just talking about the piece. And then, yeah, it was funny. He said, so I submitted the orchestra piece, most recent orchestra pieces, piece. And he said, you have heard this piece now. I, I had that piece of my own now. What's your self-criticism? That was his first question. I said, oh, that's easy. I have so many. So I went, oh, I went from like page one, bar one, two, a lot. And then halfway through, he just, uh, he just grabbed my hand, grabbed my hand and said, it's not that bad. <laughs> he said, it's not that bad. <laughs> Because are you sure you can, I can go on? I know it's still page three, but <laughs> I can go. I said, no, it's not that bad. So then uh, we spoke and then, uh, yeah, and then, uh, yeah, it was a very nice talk. And I was thinking, well, I can tell this to my grandparents, grandkids. <laughs> not, not that I had a child then even, but I was thinking that. And then, um, yeah, and then a few weeks later, I heard that uh, I was one of the two selected composers. And then I get to my music for the workshop. So the, a year after they did the workshop, but the workshop is also led by Boulez. That's crazy, right? It's not like assistant conductor anything he did. And then, uh, yeah, and then I uh, yeah, wrote it, it's good, uh, did that. <laughs> he doesn't really say much. He didn't really say much of the advice or anything. Only he said was, it's hilarious to me, or well, anyone who knows the music a lot. He said, oh, here, perhaps, here, I mean, you can do something, I don't know, add trills or something. But it's hilarious because his music is often consists of trills. <laughs> so. <laughs> Oh, we can do some trips and that. But so I so I he told me that. So I did rewrote that section, he's right, but I didn't do trills. Because he said do trills, so I don't do trills. So I did something else. And uh yeah, and um, yeah, it was I don't know. And then that the, then a year after he well premiered, and then there's a, several years later he also conducted other pieces of mine and there was a many encounter with him. Not not just uh um, the concert. I bumped into him many places, really many places. Sometimes I had a premiere and he was in front of me in the audience. I've, how now? I know racking up, but it was very nice, very, very nice. Very, and I don't know, lots of sense of humor. And sometimes he would say, that, Oh, I, uh, I, I, I received your, your letter. Uh, sometimes I write a letter. He wrote me a letter too. So it's, oh, your sense of humor is great or something like this. And, uh, yeah, it's it's really it's way more how can I say humorous and uh, um, how can I say it's it's not at all it's very different it's not the same image that a lot of people might have academic right. isn't I don't know the last we didn't talk about anything like this so way more casual, casual. and uh, casual fast the, the the thinking is so fast it's like a, I mean um, hanging on to the fastest car <laughs> or something you know because it's very very fast and you will. He would just go on and uh, yeah. So, but again, it's a, it's a it's very funny, very 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 gen very generous, very yeah. It's a yeah. It's a always all uh, the the best uh, word I would describe is cheeky, very this the kind of very cheeky like a teenager sort of like a sparkle in his eyes always. Mm. It's uh, <laughs> yeah. It's it's a very uh, fond memory for me and. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Uh, yeah, he, yeah, he, he, people might people say he supported me, but I'm, I'm sure he did. But I, I don't really know in my capacity. It's not like I can ask. And also, he helped many young composers, which is great. And um, yeah, so but anyway, it was a, it was a great uh, experience for me to meet somebody whom I saw his face, black and white, in a textbook. Now, not just very far in the Barbican Hall. It's in the very close, and now shake hands and everything. It's, it's, it's nice. It's uh, yeah. Yeah. But it's very funny that the one episode may, if I may say so, I remember because after this experience, so therefore I know him. So I, I think I can go back to stage to say hello, let's say and it was in Barbican. It was, um, it was a bar talk, a uh, Bluebeard castle. Yes. That's what he conducted. Yeah. The concert version. So he conducted, he, did that in Barbican with the singers, of course, the orchestra. 
And because I don't want to queue for, like, you know, there's a lot of music business people there. Yeah. And I don't want to do this. So I, I just run to the back of the, you know, the backstage. When he stopped his conduct, he finished the piece. And then, you know, the people start clapping. And then I run to the backstage. So he was still, when I arrived there, he was still on stage, either taking a bow, even though he hasn't come back yet. Yeah. <laughs> right. So anyway, so I just I just made uh, uh, managed to go in because I could be on the list. So I just go in. I just just standing there because I'm, who am I? Nothing. So I was just standing there, at the really at the really at the, on, the, on the side in the backstage, and people clapping, and then he, singers with dresses and they just coming in and talking like, oh, it went well, blah blah that stuff. And then Blaze was just coming in for the first time. And then uh, there's an audience going crazy, clapping, clap, clapping, and then, uh, you know, and then he just, he just, yes, and he just looked at me, oh, die. It's like, and he just came to me, he was really talking, as in, not like, how are you, blah, blah, blah. He was talking, immediately, he, he immediately, he remembered three months, six months ago, I met him, I was going somewhere to have my concert or something, my piece. And he was, oh, how was that? How was, I remember he was say, how was Donna Michigan? Or sometimes he said, how was Japan? How, that, that kind of. Wow. You remember how's that? The, but it's a middle of an entire Barbican. I'm sure the stuff. That, who the hell is that guy? I mean, who is he? I mean, we no, the course is not finished. So <laughs> going on and on, and then uh, you know the audience are clapping and singers are waiting what to do, and then uh, he just immediately to, to the singers, oh you go, you go, and the singers went there on stage without Bulez, and Bulez is talking to me in the conversation, not like a blah blah conversation. It's like oh how was it? Who conducted that? And uh, Oh, which orchestra? Blah, blah, blah. Oh, that was great. Blah, blah, blah. And then there's a real conversation going on. And then the singers, yeah. even singers, took bow several times and came back. Yeah. And now he really need to go. <sighs> so the stage manager, I think, says, oh, Maestro, you really have to go. And they said, oh, well, uh, uh, so apparently I have to go. So I'm not okay, here, please. <laughs> so they went. It's strange, right? Oh. It's this, 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 this concentration. Like, uh, but I wasn't there to say, I am here, not not at all, because the concert is not finished. I was at the at the, you know, the barbican is long, so there's a backstage door. I just opened the stage. I was just standing there, like as if I'm a, a guard or something, like a staff of the hall, right? He just uh, just, just look at oh, I died. Just right, he came, so I had I made him walk to me, and then he's really engaged, really engaged conversation as if there's no one there. No one is around us. I'm just talking really, really in details. Um, ah, so almost, and, almost as if he didn't do a concert at all. He just came. No, no. It's just yeah. Uh, that's oh. another thing that uh, another things that I have noticed that he every time I see him, this is my my own impression. He conducts and then he, the con performance is finished, and I think he for him it's done. Hmm. It's he's. It doesn't seem so much interesting, like bowing and, and how beautiful he was, blah, blah, blah. I can see in his face now because I knew him. It's like a, he, he did his amazing performance and then that, that's just his mind is next. It's just, um, yeah. So, so it's quite often I saw him in Europe, um, audience, they are standing ovation and everything. Hmm. But he just takes the orchestra back like a second bow. So it's enough. But you know how these people just go on like 10 times, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that means applause, applause. It's just like, oh, it's enough. It's like <laughs> orchestras. We are standing there. We're thinking, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> that was like three minutes. <laughs> but I, I, yeah. I find that I find that really, really admirable that, you know, even even after a concert, when your mind is all over the place, you know, conducting. You're open now, yeah. oh, yeah. out of all these things. <laughs> out of all those things. You care, you, you think about so much and then at the backstage and you see your friend, you give all your attention to your friend. I find that really, no. really admirable. No. Really, really how was, and the first thing, oh, I, I died. How was the narration? And how was your, your trombone concerto? How, how was that? Who conducted that? that, that, that this is the, the whole thing. And then uh, imagine that his status and no one can mm. interrupt this conversation. And then mm. everybody's mind, I, I could see like a, as if it's a, in a manga, uh you know like a bubble say who yeah. the hell is that guy <laughs> who is he <laughs> it's, i i i felt i i don't know i i should have done that or not but it's a it's very yeah 
Even in the general rehearsal, yeah, in general rehearsal, I sometimes I, I observe because I love going to general rehearsal because I learn a lot. And as I said before, I can never afford this kind of very expensive seat or anything. So hmm. in general rehearsal, I can sit anywhere. Hmm. So I, 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 I learn and so I'm just there. And then sometimes from the stage after, after the general rehearsal, Bule said, oh, uh, Bule said, oh, Mr. Fujikura. Sometimes he has a joke, he say, oh, die. And then we just said, hi. I said, oh, come back, come, come back, come back to backstage. And then, then sometimes I, so I, sometimes he said in his room, in his uh, conducting dress room, which is funny, his dress room has nothing. I think there's no, nothing. You know, quite mm. often big star or, or ask for many things, right? Yeah. Sure. It's, it's nothing. And then he said, oh, you sit there. I was okay. I said, I, mean, I don't know. I just want to say hi. That was it. It's, there's no, uh, I don't need, I don't have anything to discuss in this case. But he's there and then we just discuss. And in the meantime, a lot of people comes in, including the, well, for example, including like a Pierre Laurent Emma, whom I also I know, who's going to play the piano concerto. Yes. He's a soloist tonight's concert. So he wants to discuss about tempos, mm -hmm. of course. But I'm there for some reason because I, I was there before. So I was going to say, oh, okay, I'm, I'm going to go. Of course, I don't want to interrupt. Because no, no, don't go. So, okay, I, I, I just sit there right next to Pierre Lone. I was talking about second movement. Just, I'm just observing. It's, it's amazing for me to look because how yes. these two, to this guy, I'm just, I'm like a, nodding. And then uh, after the done, so go, okay, so now it's going to be, so we'll, we'll do that, he would say to Pierre mm -hmm. and then and Pierre Lohan is he's very nice he's just he looking because ah, I'm sorry and interrupted he said so what well, no, I'm not interrupting I'm interrupting you uh, so I don't know why I'm here so it's it's a very strange and in the meantime there's a, like a lead of the orchestra saying hello and of course mm. all that kind of stuff but I'm just there don't know what I should so it's yeah it's, it's very interesting it's amazing. yeah but he will ask you will ask a, yeah, like a genuine interest. Uh, what I do and I'm doing, what am I writing next to? Who, who did you work with last? Um, and, uh, in, in like a no, like, as I said, normal conversation, sure. but with a, with a lot more attention, I think. Yes. Very concentrated attention. Yes. Oh, <laughs> it just that, could be overwhelming. I mean, how did that make you feel that he gave you so much attention and so much time? No, no it's, it's, it's nice. Um, I don't know. It's it's a very strange for me to say. Uh, who am I to say? I know that, but you know, sometimes that when you meet somebody, hmm. a friend or whatever, whoever, that you meet somebody that you something. I know it's very very arrogant of me to say, but I don't know how other way to explain. But I yeah. definitely can say that that him and I, we when we spoke. Oh. What, whatever like this um he's a public person and i can see even then i can see it's a real click hmm. you know it's a it's not that um politeness or anything hmm. but it's really we, we we sort of i don't know it was, it was to be honest the rehearsing with him and stuff is that really easy funny enough easiest person to rehearse is with him i would say and a lot of people uh, was, I remember people around me was surprised the way I well, not behaved, I guess in the rehearsal, I behaved fine, but, I, because, but because I asked for many things in rehearsal. I asked them, well, well, they're not together. Can you make it together? That sounds out of pitch to me, blah, blah, that sort of thing. It was fine. I mean, a lot of people said that the young composers with him didn't really say much, but I said a lot of things. And uh, yeah, but I remember that I saw him I, I I asked him. I'm sorry. I asked you many things. And he said, "No, no. I like correcting mistakes." He said. So, <laughs> so it was it was really fine. It's really wow. not a single weird. There's no uh, ego uh, at least with me. There's nothing like that. It was a very down to the business. Let's 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 get on with work. It's mm. uh, that's not a you know what I mean like a politics as in like oh you know who I am not not now nah, just yeah. this music sound. And somebody's F sharp is too sharp. Let's fix that. And we fix that. Mm. And, that and that is too loud. Uh, yeah, you're right. That's too loud. I could, I'm sorry. I couldn't hear the pickle. It's probably my fault. Because, okay. You play a little bit quieter. Okay. It's very, everything very fast. Two, three, one. Did you hear that? Yes. Good. Next. Very fast. <laughs> yeah. But then it's, it's never, like, yeah, it's never weird. You know what I mean? Like a personal yeah. uh, game. Well, not with me. It's just very, 
in a good sense is very dry as in a, in a good way it's like a, mm. let's do the task and this is the work that's the task and we feel good because it's fixed and then and then yeah <laughs> so absolutely. that's absolutely i don't know it's a, it's a, it's a it's a strange uh, it's not always like that with the conductors let's say mm. because conductors uh, always have sometimes the people I don't know why they have they have to do their thing the conductor thing. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes and sometimes it gets very boring. But with him, it was at least with me, it was a, it was was direct. Yes. Uh, was a, there was mm. that deeper chemistry between you two. Yeah, that allowed it to happen. Yes. Yeah. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but you, you originally mm. set out to and wanted to become a film composer. <laughs> but it's so funny. Yeah. But with the with the introduction to Boulez's music, Ligeti and Takemitsu, you know this changed. You know, is that correct? Well, no, it's not. It's not that funny enough. I don't know. But maybe it's feel. I I love films and I'm fanatic with films. And I know I was influenced by a lot of film music composers and so on uh, when I was younger, especially. But I must say that it's so weird. I get offered now to do a film project. Mm-hmm. And I do with the best of inter- in- interest and stuff, but I always get fired. <laughs> <laughs> I just got fired this year too. But I'm okay. fired, I'm fired, unpaid. Oh, it's brilliant. <laughs> Wait, I didn't know you were fired okay. unpaid, were you? I didn't ask for to be paid. Was they said, no, 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 we will pay you. Was it really? It's, it's so you- big, but. Would you mind yeah. explaining, go into more detail yeah. about the process? Well, yeah. many times it's many, several reasons, I don't know. Um, to be honest, I have to say that when I was young, I wanted to be a film composer because I like telling, I love the storytelling part and together with music. And then when I was younger, meaning that in 1990s, so therefore that time soundtrack were of always almost always uh, recorded by symphony orchestra, big orchestra, choirs and also rather than samplers and so on today. So that's how I probably got familiar with an orchestral sound when I was little, a um, child. And uh, especially with a horror, horror music um, soundtrack, I loved. Maybe that's why I was easy to go into the contemporary music because contemporary music influenced horror soundtrack big time. Uh, we all know now. I didn't know that time, but so now. Um, so the process is funny. So when I was little, because I because I was so ignorant and so stupid that I just thought so strange. Nothing was so strange. Even until recently, actually, I thought film music is that I thought the com- music was made first. Then they do the story, and then. For production, if in my opinion, that I don't see anything more important than the music, and then now I know how the music, uh, film music world works in a way by being fired many times, many times, <laughs> even though I didn't offer myself, I never offered myself. Then they offered me, okay, great, let's do that. I do my best, and then they get fired every time, uh, including Hollywood, too. Um, then it's hilarious. Hollywood must have many composers, why do they come bother to come to me? <laughs> But they do, and they get fired. Thank you very much. And you're paid, and you go. <laughs> anyway, anyway, then uh, I just I just didn't realize that in film music, the composers has to be pretty much what's the best word to describe? It's like um, composers are very much. It has to do exactly what directors and producers have to say. I mean, I don't know what word we can use now. Uh, composers are a bit like they're, yeah, what's the word? I don't know. Um, um, maybe a, a you know what I mean? Like, like, a, like, a, like a, not a soldier following orders, but like, kind of like following orders from the director. Yeah, but maybe, maybe soldier really lower rank, lower rank. Lower rank soldier. I don't know, <laughs> yeah. 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 I don't something, know like something like that. And then, um, but that, that was shocking to me too. Was about, I don't know why, why you, why, who are you, who are you to voice, the, <laughs> voice the opinion on the music? Because I'm the composer. You asked me to compose, and that's, and um, yeah, that as well. But and also at the same time, the recent one was funny, because I'm an opera composer. Yeah, I'm an opera composer. I mean, I write music. I write operas. So three operas I have written, and then opera. I 
I think I'm right to say that it is very important to collaborate with librettist. It's the key. That's the most important. So uh, I have a great collaborator, librettist, uh, who I work with for 20 years, uh, over 20 years. Um, not all operas I've done with him, but many other pieces with the text. And um, it, I think, and I'm sure he agrees too, it's my job as a composer, it's my job to decline maybe or ask for re rewrite mm -hmm. for the libretto and and then not just reject like this but it's like oh can we do other can we do other direction can we try something that's the collaboration you know yeah that's what we make and then this one this time the, the film is that i did tell them that look i'm not a film composer so i will not voice that script mm -hmm. you sent me but then that company told me that the producer told me and the director told me that who's a quite famous director told me that I who wrote the script on his own. No, it's, it's never a really good idea to write one person write a script, I think, because you need a, several people's point of view because it's, yeah. it's a story and the conversation. And so anyway, so it's based on the book. So I studied, I mean, I'm always going in, going to the project, um, with a since as a sincere as possible, of course. Otherwise, I wouldn't do it. So I did a lot of study. I love studying. So I did a lot of research. I read and many times the um, the, the book which the films are based on, and I did a um, research on directors, research on a, on an author of the direct uh, the best novel based on that stuff. So all this, and I, I really knew my subject, uh, this topic, and uh, I composed some demos and so on. And then anyway, the script came up, came, and then. Uh, they asked me three times, three times, what could, could you please tell tell us what you thought about the script? And I said, look, I'm 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 a opera composer, and my job often to to discuss about the libretto, but this is not an opera, and I'm a rookie at the movie, so I would not voice anything. So please, you you, it's fine. It's you. Do it. No, no, said no, 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 no. You you need to. I'm asking everybody. You need to. You need to. We need to hear from you too. What's your opinion? So really, they asked three times, right? And then also the people who ask me, they know that I'm not a big enough composer either. As in, I'm not like out of college composer either. So, and they remember that it was them who offered me. So not, I asked, I begged or anything. So, okay, three times. I mean, I, and I, I asked my music editor, um, producer, person who, who I'm, whom I know well, and I said, look, do you think I should? And he said, no, you really should, should say because, because you're an artist and that's the reason why we, they want to work with you. And anyway, and then, um, so I said, because I, I've had many problems with that script. And, and, and because of well, because of many, many uh, technical issues and, uh, yeah, storytelling issues I had. So, so I politely said, uh, I think you have a problem with this and this and this. And then, yeah. So just a bullet points <laughs> for places. And after that, I didn't hear for anything and they, they, they were shocked to hear such issues. And then, uh, they, they, they fired me. <laughs> what? So it's so funny. My, it's crazy because my wife is uh, from. I told you she's from Bulgaria. She remembers um, time living in a communist country. Hmm. Because Bulgaria was a communist country when she, and until she was twelve. So she was saying, "This is this is like a like a communism regime that you have a voice. So therefore, we'll fire you. You have no, you have an opinion. You have fire. So okay." So, I mean, it's, it's, again, I said, it's not that I was, um, desperate for this project. So I was thinking, well, okay, well, firing me is fine, but that you will still do have a problem with your script. And then I hope yeah. that somebody else yeah. will point out that you make, you will fix that for you, but mm. okay. And, uh, so that's how I left, that's which so is weird strange. because, yeah, but the, because, because I, it's a kind of strange for me that uh, I didn't, um, it wasn't like. It wasn't, I didn't say that, oh, make sure you change. And not like that. I just, you asked me three times to voice, I have these issues. If you think to rethink, and then you think, no, this is right, that's fine. Just you asked me to voice. Hmm. I mean, I didn't know I'm supposed to say, oh, it's just wonderful. I just can't wait to score this beautiful script, that kind of crap. I mean, I'm too old for this stuff. I, I don't, <laughs> it's a problem. What do you want me to say? I mean, and, and also the funny thing is that it's a movie. I would imagine they need to 
make a lot of profit, right, to cover the, mm. the production. I mean, what kind of script is that if you can't convince one composer? I mean, <laughs> don't you think that is a problem? Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. It's like a, it, you, you can't, you, because you need to convince like a, thousands of people, mm. if not a million. Well, you can't convince one person who really knows the subject. That's a bit weird. Anyway, exactly. so that that's the thing. So I'm looking forward to be offered another film project to be fired as well. <laughs> 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 it's weird, right? Also, but the funny thing is that I say one thing that are the last it's two years ago, I think I did the first time I managed until the end, I didn't get fired, even though I didn't offer myself uh, to write a piano piece. Um, uh, the movie is called uh, "Listen to the Universe." Um, that is a um, I don't know it's out uh, in Europe, but it's definitely uh, the novel and the movies are out in uh, I hear the Asian in Asian country, like Taiwan and and so on. I mean maybe China, I don't know. But uh, it was a big hit in Japan, and that was about piano competition. So stories about piano competition, and then the movie had an imaginary composer who wrote new piece for the contestant. Right, right. In the script, uh, in, in a novel, the best-selling novel, which they the movie, movie is based on. So they asked me to write that imaginary piece. Mm -hmm. So I managed to. I I wrote the I wrote the piece, but I also that was the best best way because no one told me what to do, and I refused to. <laughs> I refused to give any demo or anything. Right. I I, I lied. I lied to say I am a classical music composer, I don't have any uh, technological um, setup, which I do, but to give you um, demo sound of what I composed. So you need to book the four, by the way, four pianists, and, I, and the four albums that came out in the end, you need to hire, uh, you need to book this star pianist and then record, then you can hear. Hmm. So I lied. So because I mean, I don't want them to hear and then think, Oh, maybe can you do this? it's boring. And it's just that's not and also I negotiated the fact that no one can. Uh, yeah, I negotiated no one can reject the score. It just has to be that piece. Right. That was quite good. And the script was written around that piece. So of, of around my piece, that was quite nice. And then uh, editing and everything was done towards that, that my piece. And so, hmm. so so the first time I saw it on the movie, in the cinema, I bought tickets and went to see the cinema. It was great. And then uh, that piece was obviously featured quite big time, like 25 minutes in the whole. It, the piece is five minutes, but it's played many different ways. Yeah. So that was a very nice to see. And then uh, that was the only way that I wasn't fired. And I, I managed to the, to the end of the, <laughs> I well, managed you. to be in the movie. <laughs> well, thank you for telling us a story. It's, really, it's, really it's funny, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know why. It's, that's a, yeah, um, like I mean, I, I I wish we could talk all day, but I think we should mm. um, wrap up yeah. the episode. It's been such a pleasure sure. hearing your stories. Um, so just a, a, maybe two more questions. Mm. I mean, I, I find it really interesting. You said earlier that um, mm. it's always the script, and then the the music follows the script in the in the movie. That's the particular. That's the sort of general attitude. Apparently, so yeah. Yeah. Music has to follow the what's Music happening in the movie, right? What's happening in the movie? Yeah, exactly. Um, mm. Do you reckon a movie could be made out of the music, so the reverse? Oh, well, I think it's the best way. Best I mean, way. I think it's the best way. I mean, as I said earlier, that the only the music in a film project I could be involved was this this piece. You listen to the universe, and I can see that director was great. I mean. Uh, director who cut the zoom and then it's cut the picture uh, based on my piece hmm. so that worked really well but well, why not i mean you why don't you do that for a whole piece <laughs> a whole movie <laughs> i would say i mean why not i mean that's uh, yeah uh, but then again uh, and then so I, I didn't finish what i wanted to say even though i spoke long but so then so back to the, my stupidity when I was young, I get one one of them. Um, when I was little, as I said, that I thought the music was written before, and then the people made a movie out of the music, right? I mean, basically that is an opera because opera, the composer is the artist. We, we because the score is the is it is the opera. 
So stage director who comes in to stage the score and then different stage directors will stage the same music differently. That's the amazing part. I mean, for example, my first opera Solaris was uh, had a, well, several play theaters they've been done, but with a, um, some of the uh, stage was by the same uh, director and the same production. So we had, uh, I think three, yeah, three different productions, three different directors. And it's completely different, absolutely different. The look and then, and then, uh, and, and, uh, yeah, and the storytelling is completely different. And then the third time, third one, the Vienna, uh, production, it just happened, uh, several months ago. Uh, it was online and everything. I was shocked when I saw it, it, it in a good way, because I think that the main, one of the main character I, I knew in story, she died here, but she was already dead in the production. So, so that storytelling is slightly different, and uh, even of course I, I welcome that completely. But the, but that's the beautiful thing about opera, which is not possible in movie. Because you make one movie, and when is the next remake? I mean, it's mm. got you got to wait ten years, if any, right? But then the opera is okay. It could be many productions, and then every director wants to do hers or his own way, but the music is still the same. Yeah. Yeah. It's a uh, it's amazing thing, and uh, I remember the the second production. It was in Augsburg in Germany, and it was completely different, absolutely different. But the music, and then uh, some audience came to me who apparently went to the premiere by the different production, and then uh, that guy he told me that oh uh, I'm and I he, he said to me bravo, and uh, it was a it was a good good idea that uh, you revised the score, and now. The, the space and the um, and the tempo and then the shape is so much better. I didn't I didn't change a note. It's exactly the same, and it, it's a, it's also nothing different in the perform. Uh, of course, a different performance in different orchestra, but yeah. it's, it's you know it's not like I added or I cut something. But again, it it feels very different because of the the stage and everything is different. So mm. I think that's a magical part of it. And then, and, um, and then as a composer, it's a wonderful things to, to just watch just as an audience. And, uh, yeah. yeah, so I don't know. So when I, as, as you said, that when I was little, I wanted to be a film music composer, but in maybe what I meant was I wanted to be an opera composer. I don't know. Mm. Yeah, well, I mean, but then, yeah, because I mean, I just can't imagine, definitely when I was young that I didn't think that somebody would voice what I have to compose. Mm. That's the thing, isn't it? The director will say, well, that's not what, what uh, it doesn't fit to my scene, director might say. Well, I would say, well, can't you just shoot the one which fits my music? I mean, <laughs> I mean what is that? What, you know, why do I have to change? <laughs> Basically, that's the, it's, but I think that's one reason that more and more, I think that the, films movies because of technological difference that it's it's the movies the visuals are stronger now today i think and then that's one reason if i may say so the film music today compared to 30 years ago the, the, it's the strength of the music is is less and less right. it's very diluted very sparse and texture and so on i mean compared to what uh, the music from 1980s and 90s this feel big huge orchestra and then and the melodies, whatever, they are really telling the story, isn't it? They're mm. playing the story and telling the story. And um, sometimes the, the, the dialogues are, are not there because it's music is telling the story. Yeah. You're talking about the untouchable, maybe cross hours run and, and I don't know, many, many masterpieces. It's, mm. You can't just say, oh, I, I couldn't hear the music. I mean, I don't know, something wrong with you because the music is so strong. Yeah. And then uh, there are no dialogue, some famous scenes, um, but the music is telling us, but that's enough because we see the scenes, but the music is playing. That's great. And we don't really need to tell, you don't need to tell us what's happening by words. So I don't know why uh, that's, that's, that's my, my, my thought. I, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, no, it's very, it's very insightful. It's very insightful. Thank you very much. Well, the last question, hmm? um, if you were to give advice to upcoming aspiring composers, contemporary mm -hmm. or film, what do you yeah. think are the most fundamental skills that they should have? Fundamental skills, I yes. think is, um, I think getting used to, <laughs> it's 
horrible thing to say, but getting used to be disliked. <laughs> but once you get used to it, um, it's, it's the same. Yeah. I think that, I know this is a generalization, I'm sorry, but I see from my friends that not just composers, including musicians and performers, that some of my friends, they are, I can just imagine, because they are very nice, very nice people, uh, I can imagine they were very popular when they were growing up. Everybody likes her, likes him, maybe the, the kid's parents adore that boy you know, or girl, you know what I mean? One of those kids, I can imagine. They don't tell me, but I can see that. Yeah. And then uh, I can see tiny little things, the rehearsals and tiny little uh, criticism and things that really get them because they've been so being told how just worshipped and liked and loved. And, and it's, so they deserve because they're such nice people. You know, I can say I like them, of course. There's not, of course, they people like them, of course. But, <laughs> but I was definitely not like that. So it was a really good skill as in people dislike all the time it's fine and all, all what i did or all, all me when i was growing up it's then uh, when you become i don't know uh composing so meaning that the composing whatever it is you're gonna compose music fine you're gonna play it just for yourself that's great now that's wonderful but if you decide your music to be out of your living room that means it's up for grab about criticism. I mean, people can say whatever they want to say, and they should be, you know. I mean, today, I don't understand that even the famous composers, I don't know whom, I don't want to say whom, but say that, oh, it's not out of order to other composers to say in public about our composition is this or something. But why not? Because, of course, the other people, anybody hear it and they say, I don't like it, it's too blah, blah, too one. I mean, of course, but... You can't shut them off to say that is wrong. There's, you can't just, well, that is wrong. That means that you're saying that the other person's thinking is wrong. <laughs> uh, maybe, but, but, then, but then, but if this is something about science or something, maybe it's right or wrong, I don't know. But it, this is music. It's, of course, there are 100 people, 100 opinions, right? And you are putting out your music outside your, your bedroom. That means you're okay with it. I mean, I take it. If you're not okay with it, don't let anyone else hear it. It's fine. Just for yourself. That's that's also beautiful too. We're composing just for yourself. But why not? It's, it's, that's what you want to do. But if you want to put it out, another person, like one person over there, to hear it. Well, I'm sorry, but you know you have to be ready. If that person just just didn't like it, it's fine. That doesn't mean you you wrote a bad piece. It's just that that person didn't like it. And then to try another person. That person may not like it either. <laughs> but I think that I think that the most important, I mean, just for the last one, I sometimes I tell my student that I think it's important to know your if if you're writing the music, if you're writing the music, do you still love it? Do you still like it what you're writing? Even if that music you wrote, um everybody in the whole world except you dislike it that's the big thing it's a bit similar to in my opinion like having a own child i mean of course i love my own child because she's my daughter um but it really doesn't matter i mean it's the entire world likes her or dislike her well, what does what's that got to do with anything i mean i, I she's my my daughter and i love her that's that's, that, that, that's, that's it. I'm sure that many parents would feel this way. It doesn't matter. Your cousin thinks uh, she is that or you, well, whatever. Think whatever you want. But that's, but that, that's the uh, confidence in that piece. But because you produce the piece, that means you, it's, you need to have a responsibility. You need to protect the, your piece from the world, let's say. <laughs> it's good that if you write a piece and everybody loves it, bravo. That's nice. But again, even if no one did, no one liked it. But then still, if you still think that is a important and then you love that piece, then that's that's fine. But you need to be like a soldier <laughs> to protect that piece, I think. Yeah, well, Dai, thank you very answer. much. Thank you. Thank you for having me.